What's up, y'all? This is going to be a Blender tutorial about merging armatures. Basically, taking clothes that have armatures that you want to merge with the base body armature, and those clothing may have extra bones, like this strap here. Make sure you can see it. That uh, kind of has its own physics to it because there's fizz bones in that strap itself. It came with its own bones. So when I merged these pants, it had a body armature that I then merged with this base body armature of my avatar. So... We're gonna go through, show you how to do that as quickly as possible. Let's jump into it. Okay, so starting out, we wanna make sure that you're running 2.93 or later version of Blender, as well as you've got the Cats add-on installed, which is this cool little menu right here. Basically with Cats, we're not gonna be using the top two options. We're only gonna be using the custom model creation section. And in that, we're gonna be using the merge armature tab. So we'll go more into that later. But basically we're combining the two armatures together and that's going to make it so any kind of extra bones like this are going to be able to have fizz bones put on it at a later time in Unity. So the next step you want to do here is we're going to import your FBX of the clothing. I already actually have the clothing on the model. Oops, wrong hand. On the model right now. So I'm just going to show you how to import, but I won't be clicking the import button. So again, you just go to import in the files tab, then go to FBX, and then find the outfit you want. Click it, import, and done. And that's going to add the extra armature and the extra items under that armature. Now, the biggest thing to remember here is we're going to be using merge all bones. And then you also want to make sure your base and two merge armatures are matching the proper armatures in your outliner. And so the base armature is going to be your body armature. And then the two merge armature is going to be the outfits armature. And then if we go ahead and break down the merge all bones, what you're going to see is it says, let's pause this real quick. Merge all bones together that have the same name instead of only the base bones. What this does for us is if you have a custom clothing item or outfit that already has its own armature and weight painting done to it, this will help us match that weight painting from the original armature to the base body armature. Next thing we're going to do here is make sure all the bones in both armatures are matching in name. If they're not, then you're going to have to rename all the bones in the new clothing armature to the same as the base armature. Also, we're going to look for what are called end bones, usually, E-N-D, and that's going to be in your fingertips or in the breast or in the butt, and usually this is done because people use the cat's fixed model option, which then adds all these extra things and renames the base bone. Okay, so as you can see here, once you start to get into the armature bones, it really takes up a lot of space. So what we want to do is we want to create a separate window that has the outliner, which is where all your bones and objects are and armature stuff, we're going to create a second window that copies that so we can have one armature, like the base body armature on one side and the clothing armature on the other side. So the way you do that is you're going to go over into the viewport mode, just 3D view mode. You're going to do a vertical split, and then you have a little icon at the top left of each uh, 3D window that then gives you the option to change what that window views. So what we have here is we have the outliner in both of these windows, which will allow us to put these armatures side by side, make it easier to go through and rename everything. Now in this project, we already have the head and body already merged. So that is something that we're not going to go through right now. But basically what we're showing you right now is kind of the same way that you would do it using the, the CATS custom model creation section with the merge armature tab. So one of the main issues that I ran into with the armature for the outfit was that it also had extra bones for the hands, feet, chest, and butt, basically end bones. That was not on the base body armature. And again, this is because of the fixed model option in CATS. So what you're going to do is you're going to select those end bones, whether it be in an outliner, in the outliner window, or you're just going to select them in the editor. It's whichever is more comfortable for you. But you select those end bones, and you're going to want to delete all of them. So this way, you're going to have an equal number of bones with the original base armature and the new outfit armature, along with all the new name changes and the only extra bones being the like straps, chains, whatever you wanted to have new fizz bones that are separate from the body base armature itself. Changing all the bone names is definitely going to take some time, but once you're done, just make sure to double, triple check that all bone names are correct, and then we can get back to the cat's tool and just merge all bone armature right now. Now, all we have to do that we know everything's good is click the merge armature bone down at the bottom. Don't click anything else. And this is going to completely merge the outfits armature to the base body's armature. Now you can see that we literally have one armature. Make sure to double check the bones. Double check there's no extra bones that you don't want. 
but you can see everything is under this one armature now. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now that you have the armatures merged, you want to go ahead and go into pose mode, which by selecting the armature and then clicking control tab or changing the uh, inter interaction mode option up at the top, then you can literally just click on the leg. If you can't see the bones, that's fine. The biggest thing is when you click on any part, let me get out of the way, on any part of the body, it will tell you up at the top over here in the white lettering what bone you actually have selected when you're in pose mode. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just hit R and X and you're gonna be able to rotate on the axis, the legs, and make sure it moves. One of the things to remember is that when you are in pose mode, you wanna make sure that this little X next to the butterfly thing, which is basically symmetry, is on, because then when you do poses with like the legs or the arms, you don't have to do one or the other, you can just do them at the same time. That helps with weight painting and checking things. And weight painting is very important, and posing is very important in Blender. So when you get to Unity, that is all taken care of. Now we wanna do some sculpting, and the way we're gonna do this is by in object mode, selecting the pants in the outliner, and then going to sculpt mode in the interaction mode option drop down. So from there, in sculpt mode, I like to use snake hook. Um, but one of the first things you're going to do is just like pose mode, you want to actually go up to that little butterfly again, or in the tool option, and you can actually set symmetry in sculpt mode. And what this is going to do is give you a nice little symmetrical tool option where you have two dots in the same areas on each side of the pants. Now you're gonna to wanna to sculpt until your heart's content. I use the snake hook and the smooth tool. Those are generally my main tool. The snake hook does like kind of a 3D, you know, repositioning of vertices, but this is all gonna be based upon what you're working on. Just kind of doing a quick little background. One of the things to remember though, is that you actually can turn off the symmetry option because sometimes when it comes to a piece of clothing, not having the symmetry on is a little bit better so you can make it look more even. Okay, now this is gonna be an example of the smoothness tool here when it turns into red. And what that does is it's gonna kinda of tighten up the vertices and bring it in. You wanna be very careful because with things like this chain right here, if you use smoothness tool on that chain, which is why I have them separate, it will cause an actual like depreciation of the vertices where you're like losing topology and then you can't recover it unless you do control Z. So now we're gonna work on editing the chain, which you cannot switch in sculpting mode to any other objects. You have to actually go to object mode in the interaction mode drop down and then select the different object you want to edit. All right, so now that we've switched that over, we can go ahead and edit the chain appropriately. So that's kind of a basic rundown of sculpting for you. All you got to do is kind of eye it yourself, make sure everything looks good. Another option is there's this little Venn diagram up at the top, actually. Let me pause this and hopefully my screen doesn't yell at me. There's a little Venn diagram here. If you open that, it will actually give you an option, which is located around here. I know I don't have it open, but it's called wireframe. That will actually make it so you can see all the vertices. And I'll give an example real quick on the screen, but it's a good habit to have when you're doing sculpting and editing in Blender on these different kind of clothing assets. The last two tips I have when it comes to sculpting is the strength and radius option. When you're sculpting, especially with something like snake hook or smoothness, those are very important things you need to pay attention to. A lot of people think it's like a plug and play thing. They just click on smoothness and it should smooth a general amount. No, these two options are going to make it so your smoothness either destroys your clothing item or actually like gently touches up some areas where it's gonna make the vertices not stick out all edgy and whatnot, like their corners. So that's something to consider. Make sure to play around with those when you're first using the sculpting tools. That will definitely help you get a different, a very like drastically different result each time you use the sculpting tool, depending on what object you're working on. So the last thing we're gonna go over here is weight painting. And the way we're gonna go over that is, as you can see, the belt here, when we move the body, is not going to move appropriately with it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the outliner, click on the belt, then down at the bottom, there is going to be a little triangle icon that is the data properties of that object. And it is going to bring up vertex groups. And in those vertex groups, that's gonna have all your weight painting data. The biggest thing for me right now, I know that what I wanna weight paint is going to be the hip bone. I wanna make sure that there is proper weight painting data for the hip bone because the belt goes around the hip. And I'm already pretty used to the fact that top of the pants, belts generally have a hip weight paint and that will most likely be it um, sometimes depending on where the belt is 
it can change to your spine or possibly your upper legs. But generally, I put belts right around the hip area, so all I have to do is weight paint to the hips. This is actually pretty simple. You're just going to want to find the hips. You want to make sure you're in weight paint mode, and then you can do Control z which will cause X-ray mode, which makes it so weight painting is a lot easier to see. Let me move out of the way so it's easier to see. And then again, go back to hip bone. From here, let me pause real quick. The tools I like to use are going to be the top one, which is the draw, then the hand with the finger on it, like kind of like this. That smear and the one blow it that's highlighted is gradient. Those are the three tools I really use. Of course, the color, uh, the gradient picker, which is like the little teardrop thing or eyedropper thing. Oh, my God. The dropper. And that is where you can actually click on a weight painted area and it will change your draw weight paint or gradient weight paint automatically to what you clicked on. Okay, so here you can see I'm going to do the draw tool to start off with just a weight paint of one. And I'm going to try not to do the extra strap on the belt there because the extra strap actually has uh, bones that it is already parented to. So I just want to get the main strap going around the hip and have that set to one because I want it completely weight painted to the hips so it moves with the hips when the hips move. Um, and we're going to see here after I'm done that everything is matched up and weight painted properly. Okay, so now if we select the armature and then go into pose mode, you can then hit R and then on any access move it and you'll see that the belt moves with the body. So we have successfully weight painted the belt to the hip bone. It's as simple as that. It's not always going to be that easy. There's a lot of different stuff that you have different kinds of weight painting, as you can see on the body behind me. When chest, the tie, the hair, those can be a little finicky. You might need to weight paint to various bones. But luckily with the belt, we just had to do the hips. So that's all done now. At this point, just like import, exports right down below, and you're going to want to do it as an FBX, which is what I do. And that goes right into your Unity files. Usually what I will do actually is put it into an asset folder. If it lets me click again. I'll put it into an asset folder of the project that I'm actually working on. So you'll see I have some Unity projects here. I'll open up a Unity project. And there it is, Assets folder. And boom, I have two FBXs, which are two different avatar FBXs. And then you go into Unity. Make sure you have that open, and it will import. And you just drag and drop into the hierarchy. I really appreciate you all making it this far in the video. Make sure to check out our Discord where you can come ask any questions. We will be opening a support ticket system, so if you want help with avatar creation, world creation, or possibly get some commissions, we will be able to help you with that. And also, make sure to drop a comment down below on some of the topics you want to see as far as tutorials go when it comes to Blender and Unity. And make sure to hit that like button if you did enjoy it, dislike it if you don't like it, but make sure to drop a comment, say what you didn't like about it. Besides that, this is Thrice. I gotta get back to work. Y'all take it easy. And I'll see you next time.